So Color OS 16 is here and it's denser than a whole camper van of Kardashians. Packed with fantastic features, impressive customization, some fresh new camera tools, the works. It comes packed on the spangly new Oppo Find X9 series out of the box and it's rolling out to older Oppo smartphones imminently. So here's my full Color OS 16 tips and tricks guide taking a squint at some of the best features and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So the basic layout of Color OS 16 remains the same, you've still got your discovery feed, still got your notifications and control panel which are separated by default. If you want to fast access that control center you'll have to drag down from the right side of the screen but as you can see you can zip between them just by swiping left and right. And if you don't like this split layout no worries all you need to do is go to the three dots in the control center, tap customize quick settings and then go back to classic and you'll see they'll be combined into one glorious hole again. And as always you can fiddle around with the home screen settings by long pressing on a spare bit of desktop. You've got your home screen settings down there in the bottom right. We can mess around with the grid layout, expand it into five columns and customize quite a few other bits in there too. And with that Color OS 16 flux screen design, you can stretch out folders. All you gotta do is long press on them and then drag them either horizontally or vertically. As you can see, the other apps will just kind of flow around them to make space. And you can also enlarge app icons. So for instance, this camera shortcut, I can drag that out, make it a big icon and I can either leave it like this or I can move it about or if I long press on it you'll see I now have the option of adding further camera shortcuts to the icon so for instance we can add a portrait mode shortcut a shortcut to shoot video and a shortcut into the expand mode so now using that original icon we can jump straight into video mode shoot a bit of vlog action or whatever it's cracking stuff if we dive on into the settings and scroll down to home screen lock screen and style Lots of customization shenanigans slapped in here as well. So for instance, at the top here, you've got all your various flux themes as they're called in Color OS. I've got one of these on the go for my home screen and lock screen. As you can see, there's quite a few different options slapped away in here. Select one you like and then you can fully customize it. So for instance, tap on the text, you can change that to whatever you like. You can customize the font, you can also change up the color of the text. Now you can also tinker with the widgets as well. So for instance, the clock in this case, you can again change up the font, the design, the color, everything you want. And then lastly, of course, you can change up the wallpaper to any of the default color OS ones. They've got some nice, spangly, vivid, vibrant ones in there. Otherwise, just tap at the top, choose from album. You can make it anything you've shot on your camera or downloaded from the good old internet. From your usual geeky anime shenanigans. And back in the home screen, lock screen, etc. settings menu, you've got plenty of other customization options. You can piddle around with the font, the icon design. And if you tap more, there's a few more options in here, including the fingerprint animation. Good bit of edge lighting as well for your notifications. And of course, that always on display. In Color OS 16, you've got a small variety of options. You can either have a classic always on display, a seamless one which transitions nicely into your lock screen with a nice smooth animation. Or otherwise, you can ape the iPhone for some reason if you want to with a full screen always on display, which I've never really seen the point in, as you really just cannot get enough of that wallpaper. And of course, you've got the usual variety of always on displays you can also choose from. And if you tap display settings, you can schedule when the always on display will pop up. So it's not on all night long needlessly. Now one of the fresh new Color OS 16 features that I really like that's been kind of buried away a little bit is motion cues. Now this is really handy if you feel a bit pukey occasionally, if you're traveling by car, by bus or whatever, and you sit there scrolling on your smartphone. Now to help combat this, motion cues chucks a bunch of blue dots on your smartphone display and these will move about as the vehicle you're sat in also moves. Hence it seems like they're doing a lot of bugger all right now because we are sat still. I'm trying to get some motion on the go to demonstrate. Uh, this is not really working well. But anyway, the motion of these blue dots does some tricksy stuff to your brain and somehow stops you from feeling all nauseous. Unfortunately, motion cues is kind of buried away. What you need to do is go into the settings and then scroll down until you see accessibility and convenience and motion cues is just stuffed in there. And there you go, that's how the blue dots actually move. If you're going to make good use of this feature, well, no worries, you can actually add it to the control center so you can just activate it and deactivate it with a quick tap there. And to do this, all you need to do is go to the pencil icon up at the top, 
and click this add button and you'll find motion cues and a big list of different icons that you can add to the control center. And while you're in here, you can rearrange the icons as well if you want them in a different order or anything. And oh yes, of course, in ColorOS 16, just like quite a lot of launchers these days, you do have an Apple style float and turd that pops up at the top of the screen if, for instance, you're playing some media in the likes of Spotify. Thankfully, it is only a temporary turd here in ColorOS 16 rather than a permanent one in the likes of good old iPhones. Stop playing that music, it buggers right off. Got to admit though, it can be pretty handy if you just want to quickly change a track or skip to a different album or something. And lots of different apps support the old floater up top. So for instance, if you were to get a stopwatch on the go, you just minimize that, that then pops up in that floater up top now. And the fact you've got brackets around it shows you've got multiple floaters on the go at once. So for instance, the stopwatch and Spotify and the recorder also supported as well. So now we've got a triple floater threat. And hey, if you've spunked out on a fresh new Oppo Find X9 series smartphone, like this here, Find X9 Pro, you'll have that fresh new snap key slapped on the edge there, replacing the old alert slider of yesteryear. And this can be fully customized in the Color OS 16 settings, although I say it fully customized. You are actually pretty limited on what this can do. By default, it snaps to mind space, which is, of course, a Color OS 16 AI feature. What else? You can also have it basically mimicking the old alert slider with sound and vibration settings. You can set do not disturb. Quickly jump into one of your favorite camera functions. Activate the torch. You can get the recorder on the go. You can translate any text or voice shenanigans going on. And you can also take a screenshot or just have it do absolutely naught if you really don't like that snap key. So for instance, in the sound and vibration mode, you can give it a quick tap to see what mode you're currently in. As you can see, I'm in vibrate, your mum's favorite. You can then long press to cycle between the different modes, silent, ring, and vibrate. So it basically turns it into the alert slider. Whereas in the default snap to mind space mode, what you can do is give this a quick tap and it will capture a mind space. And what this basically does is screenshots whatever you're looking at on your smartphone and then it'll then mine any important looking information out of there, any text that it thinks is relevant. It's pretty handy if you're looking at a complicated travel itinerary, some sort of scheduling thing, etc. So just give this quick tap, try and capture this flight information and you'll see it often pops up with options at the top here, adding stuff to your calendar so you don't forget it. Or for posterity's sake, you could capture the fact that Sunderland, at the time I shot this video, are seventh in the Sodden Premier League. Or you can also press and hold the key to record a voice memo to accompany the memory. Seventh! Bloody seventh! And then, yeah, that gets added to Mindspace. You can give this a quick tap to get straight in there. Or otherwise, a double tap at any point will take you straight into the Mindspace as well. You can review all of the memories you've stored and similar to pixel screenshots and the nothing essential space etc you can then quickly find any important information. So again most useful for schedules like which hotel am I staying at, what time is dinner, that sort of thing. But you can also ask where is Sunderland in the Premier League? And boom! Finds that information for you right there. Now, at the time I shot this cracking Color OS 16 tips and tricks video, unfortunately you can't get Gemini to access any of that Mindspace information. There's a clear disconnect between the two. However, Oppo reckons that around November time, they will be issuing an update that allows you to ask Gemini anything you want on that Mindspace stuff and it will be able to access that information and give it straight to you. So presumably you'll be able to bring up Gemini and say something like, what time is my flight that I saved to Mindspace next week? And Gemini will be able to pop up all the pertinent info. And if you happen to use some Apple devices like a MacBook, for instance, well, Oppo is trying its level best to slide nads deep into that Apple ecosystem. So for instance, download the O Plus Connect app onto your MacBook and it'll be able to communicate nicely with your Find X9 Pro. Just point your browser at connect.oppo.com, be able to download this for macOS. And once this is installed, just open it on up. As you can see, you've got a bit of multi-screen connect action. You can also remote control your MacBook using your phone for some reason. As you can see, you can either connect wirelessly by scanning a QR code on your ColorOS device, otherwise you can connect via USB. 
tap allow about a million times again and there we go huzzah as you can see i can now fast access all of my oppo finex 9 pros files right here on my macbook without having to dick around using stuff like OpenMTP. I can also screencast from my Finex 9 Pro straight to the MacBook so I can use all of my apps etc right here on my laptop. So if I was to open an app like Spotify for instance as you can see there pretty much zero lag here on the MacBook cracking stuff and you will of course notice that that float and turd is back in action again so you can end the casting session at any point. And likewise, you can also quickly share files, photos, etc. with any iPhone users, you know, as long as they again download an O Plus Connect app onto their iPhone, you can then tap your devices together. That lovely stuff will be transferred straight over. Now, any gamers out there are once again well catered for in Color OS 16. So you've got that built in gaming mode, which you can swipe out from the edge like so. And this is packed to the tits with great features. So if you tap performance up at the top there, when you're playing the likes of Genshin Impact, Wither and Waves, and other memory guzzling titles, you can swap to that pro gamer mode. Otherwise for more basic fare, bit of power saving mode is fine, but more efficient. As you can see there, you can tweak the touch responsiveness and the screen refresh rate. You also got a variety of other features which are quite handy. You can get some tunes on the go while you're gaming. You can boost the network settings as well. Make sure that you can stay connected at all times for the likes of Wuthering Waves. Quite handy because you need to be connected to the ruddy internet to play it. You can get a system status bar up top if you particularly into your stats. The game capture is pretty handy if you take a lot of screenshots or you want to record the action. This just pops up at this float and toolbar up here so you can take a screenshot by tapping the old camera icon at any point or you can start recording with the tap of the video icon. You've got the options of recording the system sound if you want all those game sound effects and music to be included in the recording. You can also record your lovely commentary via the smartphone mics. Now in my case it would just be a solid string of blasphemy and what the f am I actually supposed to be doing's. And at any point you can just tap that toolbar again in order to stop the recording. You know, like to the do not disturb modes as well, but for the ultimate leave me alone experience, the championship mode certainly does the job. Blocking alarms, incoming calls, accidental swipes and stuff, and also boosting that performance, you get the ultimate experience. And there's also a quick startup feature which you can add in there. Once this is active, if you then swipe away from a game and do other stuff, You'll notice there's this wee pull out bar in the top right here. You can drag this out at any point and hit quick start up. And as you can see, your game pops up exactly where you were. So you can crack straight or no hanging around for a minute or two waiting for the bloody thing to load. And next up, back in the Color OS settings menu, if you tap battery, plenty of stuff you can piddle about with in here. As you can see, you've got three different modes, balanced, power saving, or high performance. It's in balanced modes by default, but if you do need a bit of extra grunt, you can chuck it in the old high performance. Otherwise, if you find you really want to save a bit of power, you can't charge up your phone for a good couple of days because you're away from home or something, power saving mode will do the job. And you've even got super power saving mode, which really reduces the functionality of Color OS 16 to the most basic features. You can still use all of your apps, but you've only got fast access to six of these here on the home screen. So choose wisely. And as you can see, no fancy pants animations, discover feed, etc. You can also, in the battery settings, check on which apps have been draining that juice, sucking your phone dry, just in case there's anything there that's gobbling up more than it should. And if you tap battery health, you can check on your battery health, unsurprisingly. You can also turn on smart charging to help extend the battery life. Though this is only really useful if you have to get up at the exact same time every day with your alarm. For instance, just make sure you don't get fully charged to that 100% level until just before your alarm goes off. Or alternatively, if you set a custom charging limit to say, for instance, let's go, yeah, 90%, that'll again help prevent the battery from overcharging, which can damage its health over time. And last up, if we dive on into the camera app, a few changes here in Color OS 16 as well. So for instance, if you turn on the old motion photo mode up top, this will help to bring your photo gallery to life as you're flicking through. These motion photo snippets are now captured in 4K resolution rather than bog standard HD like they used to be. And yes, you've now got the option of adding in a slow motion effect if you really want to. 
To do so, just tap edit on any motion photo and then click the motion photo option. As you can see, there is a slow-mo option stuck away in there. You can make the whole thing slow motion or just basically just change the duration. So let's just make it the final half. And then if we play that, you'll see the first bit's normal and then hits that slow motion effect. Lovely stuff. And of course, naturally, you've now got even more features and functionality in the AI editor. A whole bunch of stuff, some of it better than the others. So for instance, you can enhance the clarity of anything that's a little bit grainy. Got perfect shots if you've got people blinking in your photo, but one of the better ones is AI Relight. And this can tweak the lighting to make the photo more aesthetically pleasing. So for instance, we've got a studio light effect going on here, which you can boost or reduce, depending on how much you want. It's about there, I think it's good. And you've got the likes of the AI Recompose as well, which can help to just reframe a shot. The good old rule of thirds, how we love it. Oh, and absolutely vital as well, if you are shooting pets or kids or stuff that tends to move around a lot, highly recommend slapping on that action mode up top. And this will help to cut down on all those blurry, nasty snaps that you end up having to throw away with action mode active. Even we subjects absolutely off their tits on Haribo tend to come out nice and sharp. And there you have it, my lovelies. That in a tasty wee nutshell is my Color OS 16 tips and tricks guide. Just some of the best bits chucked in there. Some of the features that you might not know exist. Hope that's been helpful. Pretty succinct though, of course. So if there's any Color OS 16 tips or features that you particularly love, definitely let us know down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. My full Oppo Find X9 Pro review is live right now if you want to see more on all that shenanigans. And have yourselves a bloody wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everybody. Love you.